Hey there kiddos, it is your fifth favorite airbrusher, j -Bo, coming back at you with another tutorial how to prep a goalie mask. I have an automotive background, so I'm pretty knowledgeable on the ins and outs on how to do this. I'm going to break this into two parts. It's going to be how to disassemble and prep a goalie mask. And then there's going to be another part later, which is going to be about priming and painting. It's going to be a whole other video because it's pretty involved. I'm going to go over gun setup, materials, all that. So without further ado, let's get into this. How to prep a goalie mask. So you guys may not end up using all of these products, but the complete list of everything that I use for this project is a goalie mask, a towel, Phillips screwdriver, a small container for holding loose screws and washers, a bag to put all the parts back into, a heat gun, mine's called the Super Stripper 1500, final wipe or some other form of degreaser cleaner, shop towels or paper towels, various sizes of masking tape, transfer tape, an exacto blade of some variety, a bucket of water, 400 grit sandpaper, a maroon scotch bright pad, compressed air blower, permanent marker, and a scrap piece of vinyl or vinyl backing. Again, you're not really going to need all of this stuff, but I do use it in some capacity throughout this process. Now that we have everything ready, it is time for disassembly. So on my work table, I like to lay out a towel. This is just to have a nice soft working area and not to damage or scratch up the goalie mask in any way. Now we start the disassembly of the mask. I'm cutting off these tags, which may or may not be necessary, but this particular goalie mask, the cage is getting powder coated, so I might as well. I now unclip all the clasps for the back plate and pull them through the back plate holes to get rid of the straps. It would probably be easier to just unscrew the screws and then once the cushion from the inside is out, the straps will come out easier, but either way works. So now I am going to take out the screws and I'm going to bring in my little container or a cup, something to hold the loose screws and washers. Another thing you could do is put the screws back into the foam backing that has the screw holes and that way you'll keep everything in place. I know well enough how these goalie masks work that I'm not too concerned with that. I just save them all in the container and figure if I can take it apart I can figure out how to put it back together later. Now I will pop off the foam for the back plate and move on to the actual goalie mask. Again, removing and saving all of the screws and washers. Now that it's all apart, I take my little container of screws and cover it with tape. And I don't want to get this confused with anyone else's parts, so I make sure to label it. Uh, one of the awesome things about the new Bauer masks is that once you've unscrewed it, the foams just pop right out. Uh, so once you've done that, you're pretty much done disassembly. So now that it is all disassembled, you want to take all the loose parts, throw it in a bag, and go ahead and label that too. Now we will move on to masking. Now some goalie masks have the foams glued in, so I pop the foams back in just to use it as an example on how you could mask them off in that instance. Here I'm using 3 quarter inch tape and I mask around the edge of the foams. Dealing with these holes you have a couple of options. One is to mask off the inside of the circles. To do that I like to tear off a piece of tape that's a little longer than half of the diameter of the hole. Trying to press it in there as good as you can, it can be a little tough. And then I like to tear off another piece of tape that is long enough it's going to overlap the edges of the other one. Try and press that down as good as you can. And then I take my blade, I make a series of relief cuts and press the tape down sticking them to the foam. Then you can bring in some little pieces of tape and sort of fill in the area and cover up the little gaps from the relief cuts.
The other option that you have is to actually back mask off the opening of the hole. To do this, I just take a couple small pieces of tape and try and press them tightly against the plastic of the mask, filling in the hole that way. And this allows you to just cover the rest of the foam with tape. Or, you can also use transfer tape. An advantage of this is that it's a little less sticky of an adhesive, so it won't do any damage or stick to the foams too hard. And a disadvantage of this is that it doesn't stick very well, so you have to go around all your edges and cover it with masking tape. I do find though that it covers fairly quickly, and I also find that the pre-mask is quite a bit less expensive than masking tape. So there's another advantage to it there. So those are a few options for masking off the foams if you have the type of mask that has the foams glued in. So now let's look at our options for the masks that do not have any foams. So your first and most obvious option is to just leave the inside of the mask unmasked completely. This will allow you to paint the inside if you need to change the color of it. Uh, I would say either way, if you're going to mask it off or leave it open, to cover up these little CSA stickers, uh, as well as if it happens to have that front foam in it, to cover that up as well. And I would recommend using the transfer tape and not actual masking tape on both the CSA stickers and the foam on the front. It's a different type of foam on the front there, and the tape will stick to it, and taking the tape off, you can actually destroy that foam a little bit. And masking tape will also potentially just peel those stickers right off. So if you want to salvage them, use a lower tack tape like transfer tape. The other option that you have here is to cover up the entire inside of the mask, preserving the plastic and keeping it nice and new looking. Uh, if you're going to do that with transfer tape, as I'm going to do here, it, again, it doesn't stick super well, so I like to go over all the holes and just cover them with masking tape. Of course, your other option is to just use masking tape on the entire inside, in which case you won't need to do this. In either instance, I would recommend going around and doing all the edging with a finer tape, like maybe a quarter inch or eighth inch tape, and then running your pre-mask or your tape up to that edge. That way you'll just have a much cleaner paint edge once you unmask. This particular backplate had an odd little plastic piece on it, so went ahead and covered that with some tape just by laying tape on it and cutting around the edge. For the back plate, I'll demonstrate how to tape off the inside using just masking tape. I'm still going to run the finer tape around the edge, and then I'll fill in the inside with fatter 2 inch tape, cutting it off where it overlaps my edging tape. So there's a few main options for how to mask off the inside of the goalie mask. Now we move on to a tricky little subject, which is, what do I do with these safety stickers? Now this is a controversial little topic and quite a gray area, so bear with me. If you were to talk to the actual manufacturers or the reps and say, what am I supposed to do with these safety stickers? They would say, don't f touch them. But of course, that's not necessarily an option unless you're willing to not paint the back plates and just leave them blank. There's a bunch of other stickers on this mask as well, but the only ones we need to be concerned about are the HECC one for America and the CSA one for Canada. I'm not even sure if you take these stickers off or mask them off and then paint the helmet if it is even CSA approved anymore. It seems to be that they will allow them to be done because it happens all the time. But I'm not sure what the actual said law or rule about any of this is. So if you do know, please put it in the comments. I'll gladly uh, make an update video sharing what it is we're supposed to be doing here. But as far as I know currently, you've got these few options. So let's look at masking these stickers off and how to go about doing that. So you're going to want to cover this sticker in transfer tape. Again, don't use actual masking tape because the adhesion is too strong and it will just destroy the sticker in the end when you take the tape back off. Then I'll go around it, cutting it very carefully with an X-Acto blade. Then you can do all your artwork around it, peel off the tape before you clear coat. If you're going to do this, 
I recommend that you put a layer of transparent base coat or clear sealer over top of the sticker because I found that the clear coat can actually damage and wrinkle up the sticker and then you're in a huge mess which is why I don't actually do it this way. How I do it is I remove the stickers. I use my heat gun and generally heat guns have two different heat settings on them. I put it on the lower one because you don't want to actually burn or melt or cause a problem with the plastic of the helmet. Once the sticker is heated up, the adhesive softens making the stickers much, much easier to remove. That sticker in particular does not matter to me, so I just toss it. Now we're going to move on to the HECC sticker. I'm in Canada, so this sticker is also of no consequence to me, so I'm going to just remove it and throw it out. But the heat gun still really helps with this, again, softening the glue and making it much easier to remove. So now I'm going to grab a piece of vinyl scrap or vinyl backing or even a piece of plastic something to put the sticker down on to salvage it because for this sticker we want to save it so on the first setting of the heat gun I go over and over the CSA sticker quite a bit getting it nice and hot and soft then I take my blade and very carefully just peel up the top corner until I can get my finger underneath it and slowly and carefully, trying not to stretch the sticker too much, peel it off the surface. And there we have it, uh, nice and safely removed. Now you can put it on your piece of plastic, vinyl, vinyl backing, whatever you choose, they all work. When I'm putting it back down, I like to hit it with a little bit more heat and sort of flatten it out. And that actually helps put it down wrinkle free and sort of retain the shape uh, that the sticker used to have. What I do is save this sticker and actually just give it back to the customer like that. If they need to put it back on their mask, they can do so themselves. Uh, if they want to keep it off, say they're the beer leaguer and don't need it, then they have that option. So then I pop off this last sticker, which is of no consequence, and toss it and bring in our shop towel with some final wipe or a wax and grease remover of some kind and clean off the remaining glue residue left over from the stickers. So again, guys, I'm no authority on what you're actually supposed to do with these stickers. I'm just giving you a few different options on what you can do. Uh, you go ahead and make that decision on your own that one's on you. So now we move on to the main event, sanding the goalie mask. Now we bring in our big old bucket of warm water. I know that some people add soap to the water, I don't. Uh, I don't find it necessary and I'm a little bit worried about any kind of contaminants that might be in there so I just use plain old water. You could probably use 600 grit sandpaper, but I like 400. It just gives me a little bit more etch. I'm going to be priming it anyway. There is an automotive way of folding sandpaper. You can go ahead and fold it however you want, but this is how I was taught. You fold it into thirds. Man, they would uh, get mad at you if you didn't fold your sandpaper this way. So there must be something to it. I feel like it gives you a good size working area with the sandpaper, as well as the way it's folded. You can readjust it and get more use out of your piece of sandpaper. We're going to be wet sanding this so you can go ahead and dunk the sandpaper in the water or even completely submerge it. This is how I hold my sandpaper. I like to grip it in between my thumb and index finger on the one end and on the other end grip it between my pinky and ring finger. This way I can hold the sandpaper quite taut and I've got a good grip on it and I'm not going to lose my paper. Some people might make the argument that you should be using a soft block when sanding. I don't really find this necessary with the helmets. There's so many grooves and curves. It's actually nice to have your fingers to get tight in on any of the hard to get bits. So I go ahead and just use my hand, not a block. Should you be doing circles? Should you be going back and forth? Doesn't matter. What we're wanting to do is to scratch the surface of the mask and create tooth for the paint to grab. To check your progress, what you want to do is dry off the area you've been sanding and hold the mask up so you can see the reflection of a light. 
what you're looking for is to take the shine completely off of the mask. You can see here on the left is the area that I haven't sanded yet and the area on the right is where I've been working. You can see that the areas near the edge still need to be sanded a little bit better, but the surface closer to the camera is a lot more matte looking. That is what we're going for. So pop that helmet back down and keep sanding and working section by section, checking in with the light reflection to see our progress. And as we complete each area, we move on to the next until we've got the whole helmet sanded up to that level. And this is what we are looking for. See how all the main surfaces are completely matte looking now, but in the tight little corners and crevices, they're still glossy. This is the look we want to achieve to be done our wet sanding. And from here, we are going to bring in our maroon Scotch-Brite pad. With the Scotch-Brite pad, you really just want to specifically hit those areas that the sandpaper could not get. So use the edge of your finger, just really get in all those grooves. You can get the very edge of the goalie mask as well as inside the holes. The point is to just hit all those spots that the sandpaper could not get to. So let's give it a little blow off and maybe go over it once more. Then we'll hold it up to the light and see what we are looking for. You can see that the entire mask is looking pretty matte now. In some of those hard to get spots, it looks like there might be a little bit of reflection, but trust me, I got it about as good as you can get it. So I am ready to call this thing done. Well, kiddos, there you go. Uh, that is how you prep a goalie mask or how I do anyway. A couple of different options in there. And again, there's lots of different types of goalie masks. So hopefully that covers the gambit or the majority of them anyway. And uh, next time we'll come back and I will do a video on how to prime and paint them. It won't be on this goalie mask. This is going like a metallic pink, which is not my standard. So I'll show you what I normally do to prime and base coat a uh, goalie mask and get it completely ready for airbrushing. So yeah, thanks guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to comment and uh, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Boom.